Hey, did you know that Rolex, the iconic luxury brand we all admire, has a seriously fascinating history? More than a century ago, there was a determined young boy, Hans Wilsdorf. He faced major setbacks, including losing his parents at a young age and having his inheritance taken from him. But you know what he did? He decided to brave it all, leaving his hometown and heading to a new country. After a few years of hard work, he followed his passion for watches and started a watchmaking business. Little did he know, this decision would change the watch game forever. This is the story of Rolex. Hans was no ordinary man. He had this incredible vision. Back then, pocket watches were all the rage, but he had a hunch that wristwatches were the future. He believed in them so much that he dedicated years to perfecting the wristwatch, traveling Europe, learning from watchmakers, and releasing his high-quality wristwatches. And guess what? He succeeded. The origins of Rolex trace back to 1905, when Hans Wilsdorf established a company in London dedicated to distributing timepieces. However, to truly grasp the inception of this iconic brand, one must rewind to 1903, when the ambitious German entrepreneur embarked on a journey, leaving his homeland with nothing but a dream. A pivotal moment arrived in 1908, when Wilsdorf, in partnership with his brother-in-law Alfred Davis, founded the Wilsdorf and Davis Company. Little did they anticipate the prosperity, recognition, and global acclaim that awaited them in a mere three years. In a moment of inspiration aboard a London double-decker bus, the name Rolex materialized in Wilsdorf's mind in 1908. He had long sought a brand name that resonated universally, devoid of cultural biases. According to him, it was as if a whisper from a genie guided him to the name, which he believed captured the essence of a winding watch. In 1910, Wilsdorf elevated Rolex's manufacturing standards by collaborating with Maison Aigler in Bienne, Switzerland. His pursuit of perfection led him to secure an independently verified chronometric certification in the same year, making Rolex the first wristwatch retailer to achieve this esteemed distinction. This meticulous attention to detail and relentless pursuit of excellence laid the foundation for Rolex's reputation for precision and quality. Each step in this journey exemplifies Wilsdorf's dedication to creating a brand that not only stands the test of time, but also redefines the essence of horology. In 1999, a significant turning point occurred for Rolex when England imposed a hefty 33% tax on custom imports, directly affecting the brand. In response, Hans Wilsdorf strategically relocated the company from London to Geneva. This move not only shielded Rolex from the tax burden, but also brought Wilsdorf closer to the brand suppliers in BM. Since 1999, Rolex has come to symbolize the grandeur and clarity of the Swiss Alps, capturing the essence of its picturesque surroundings. Then, tragedy struck the Wilsdorf family in 1944, just a year shy of Rolex's 40th anniversary. Hans Wilsdorf, who had achieved immense wealth and success, faced a profound loss when his beloved wife Florence passed away. Despite his stature as one of the world's most accomplished men, the void left by her absence led Wilsdorf to seek a meaningful purpose. In response to this newfound purpose, Wilsdorf established the Hans Wilsdorf Foundation. With unwavering commitment, he pledged to channel all his shares in the company towards charitable causes. This foundation would become a testament to his philanthropic legacy. Upon Wilsdorf's passing in 1960, ownership of Rolex transitioned to the Hans Wilsdorf Foundation. A portion of the foundation operates as a private family trust, overseeing the distribution of Wilsdorf's shares to various charitable endeavors. This enduring commitment to charity ensures that Wilsdorf's vision continues to make a difference in the world. In 2017, the Hans Wilsdorf Foundation expanded its philanthropic reach by investing in education. Initially, the foundation directed its proceeds to watch-related institutions such as the Geneva Watchmaking School and the Swiss Watchmaking Research Laboratory in Neuchâtel. As the foundation stepped into the 2010s, it furthered its impact by donating $100 million to HEADS Campus, an esteemed applied arts school in Geneva. Through these strategic investments, the Hans Wilsdorf Foundation continues to shape the future by supporting education and fostering creativity in the arts. Now imagine this, 1926, a year that changed the watch world forever. Rolex unveiled the Oyster, the world's first waterproof watch. Picture this, 
fearless long-distance swimmer Mercedes Gleitzer taking on the English Channel with this groundbreaking timepiece strapped to her wrist. After her incredible 10-hour swim, guess what? The Oyster's hermetically sealed case still showed the perfect time. Talk about a game-changer! Now, let's fast forward to 1931. Rolex engineers had a light bulb moment. Why not harness the energy from wearing watches to power the wristwatches themselves? And that's how the perpetual movement technology was born. Thanks to a clever free rotor, Rolex watches could wind up based on the wearer's movements. Self-winding watches? Yeah, Rolex made it happen. In 1945, they introduced the Oyster Perpetual Datejust. This luminescent beauty, fully waterproof and dipped in a luxurious 18-carat yellow gold, was a trendsetter. Why? Because it was the first self-winding chronometer to display the date proudly. And guess who fell in love with it? Dwight Eisenhower, Martin Luther King Jr., and the Dalai Lama rocked the date just with proud. Folks, fasten your seatbelts. We're heading to 1971. Rolex wowed the world with the Oyster Perpetual Explorer 2. Picture this rugged timepiece, gracing wrists in the heart of Manhattan and deep within the Amazon jungle. But wait, there's more to this watch. It was designed especially for cave explorers, who needed to know if it was AM or PM during their hours-long adventures in dark depths. Practical and stylish? That's Rolex for you. Moving on to 1985, Rolex introduced something truly special. They crafted the first ever watch from Oyster Steel, a proprietary alloy. This material, once reserved for high-tech applications in chemical and aerospace engineering, gave the watch a dazzling sparkle while being incredibly durable. Whether you were a laborer or a businessman, this steel marvel was the perfect companion. Now, in 2000, they redefined watch construction. Imagine crafting a fully functional watch with just 290 components. That's exactly what Rolex did with the 2000 Oyster model. And if that wasn't enough, the Cosmograph Daytona flaunted 4130 chronograph caliber movements, exclusively designed and assembled by Rolex. Talk about precision and craftsmanship at its finest. Fast forward to 2005, and Rolex pulled off another jaw-dropping move. Picture this. Deep black, shining blue, and lush green serochrome bezels adorning Rolex's professional models. It departed from the traditional golds and silvers, breaking new ground with super durable ceramic material. Scratch-proof and stunning, these bezels were a testament to Rolex's enduring beauty and innovation, setting the stage for an exciting future. So, imagine this. Rolex, the brand that adorned the wrists of some of the world's most exceptional athletes and beloved entertainers. From tennis legend Roger Federer to opera maestro Placido Domingo, Rolex has always been a favorite among the supremely talented. But you know where it all started? with a young woman named Mercedes Gleitzer. She wore a Rolex Oyster as she conquered the mighty English Channel. And guess what? From the southern coast of England to the northern coast of France, that waterproof marvel continued ticking. Talk about perseverance. Now picture the thrill of breaking the world land speed record. Not once, but nine times. That's exactly what British motorist and journalist Sir Malcolm Campbell did between 1924 and 1935. And for his grand finale in 1935, he wore a Rolex Oyster while zooming at mind-boggling speeds on the salt flats of Utah. What's intriguing is that Campbell never accepted money from Rolex. He simply wanted the best watch out there. That's dedication. Nonetheless, in the post-war era of 1946, Rolex decided it was time for a change. They introduced the Tudor brand, making Rolex accessible to everyone. Hans Wilsdorf, the visionary behind Rolex, waited two decades to launch Tudor, ensuring it met its high standards. The Tudor Oyster line was waterproof and self-winding, crafted from top-notch durable materials. Finally, Rolex became a brand for the people. Fast forward to 1953, a year that marked the debut of two iconic Rolex watches, the Explorer and the Submariner. The Submariner, built to withstand the mighty forces of the sea, and the Explorer, designed to conquer the land, became instant favorites. Legends like Sir Edmund Hillary and August Picard wore these watches during their historic moments. And guess what? You can still own a piece of that history with the Submariner and Explorer, available today. Now, folks, have you ever heard of the Mariana Trench, the deepest trench on Earth? 
Well, in 1960, Rolex sent a watch deeper into the ocean than ever before. The Trieste, a cutting-edge bathysphere, touched the ocean floor in the Mariana Trench. And who accompanied it? Lieutenant Don Walsh fearlessly explores the depths with a Rolex on his wrist. Now, that's reaching new heights, or rather depths. In 1971, Rolex joined forces with the prestigious French diving group Comex, strengthening its bond with deep-sea divers. Over almost three decades, Rolex produced nine Comex watches, making it the most sought-after modern watch brand among collectors and enthusiasts. Rolex truly made waves in the deep blue sea. In 1976, Rolex marked this milestone by hosting the first ever Rolex Awards for Enterprise. These awards honored individuals who embody the Rolex spirit, courage in facing challenges, and dignity in facing danger. Rolex recognized these unsung heroes, showcasing the brand's values and commitment to excellence. In 1992, Rolex set sail into the world of sailing. They introduced the Pearl Master, an update to the beloved Lady Datejust, and the Yacht Master, the latest addition to the Oyster family. The Yacht Master marked a shift towards luxury, shimmering in a pure 18 karat gold. Rolex embraced the sailing community, bringing elegance and style to the high seas. Then, in 2002, they launched the Mentor and Protégé Arts Initiative. This incredible program paired budding young artists with celebrated masters, nurturing talent and fostering growth. From dancers and writers to filmmakers and architects, Rolex opened doors for these talented individuals, guiding them toward a brighter future. Fast forward to 2012 and Rolex unveiled a burst of colors with the Sky Dweller Rainbow Daytona. Imagine a watch adorned with vibrant sapphires and pink gold crystals. This dazzling creation, available in white and yellow gold, became an instant hit among collectors. Rolex took hints of color from their past models and transformed them into a vibrant masterpiece, adding a touch of magic to their timeless legacy. Over the years, Rolex continues to innovate, not only in terms of technology but also in design. The brand introduced iconic models such as the Submariner, the Daytona, the Datejust, and the GMT Master, each with unique features and styles. Rolex's commitment to timeless aesthetics and functionality contributed to its status as a symbol of luxury and prestige. So the next time you look at your wristwatch, remember the story of Hans Wilsdorf and the incredible journey that turned Rolex into the iconic brand it is today. It's not just a watch.